This video is brought to you in part by, and I use that very loosely, Coca-Cola. Oh, I thought it was the Chicago logo. I mean, I'm sorry, I mean, I hope you understand that logos do look a little similar. Yeah. Okay, anyways, so I thought I'd do something different. Um, I always do videos about, you know, how, uh, you know, my, my NES collection or my Famicom collection or Super Nintendo, whatever. And this time I decided to do my CD collection. Now, I don't want to give people the wrong impression. So what, you're collecting CDs now? Yes and no. Um, I usually like to buy the CDs because I, um, you know, I like having physical copies. I know as a Christian, material possessions aren't important, and that, that's not why I'm getting them. It's the main reason because, you know, everything's digital now. And I've already authorized four out of five computers on iTunes. I can't deauthorize the other few because the hard drives have, you know, been wiped out or, you know, have crashed. So there's nothing I can really do about that. So, just turned nine o'clock. Um, this isn't even going to be the end. I mean, there's going to be like a part two or three at least. So, maybe just part two. But, um, because I have a bunch of CDs out in the hallway. Here, um, this whole drawer pretty much, or at least like two fifths of it is, you know, full of CDs. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd show you guys some of them. Um, so yeah, I, I usually only import discs if like they're my favorite albums of all time. So, I mean, I try not to do that because they're expensive. Hmm. Anyways, let's move on, or let's do it. The, I mean, I brought a few out from the hallway, but I mean, anyways, so here's Weird Al Yankovic in 3D, and, and most of these I buy for like a few bucks, like I'll find them at Goodwill, or I'll go to a CD store downtown in Seattle called Silver Platters. Um, I mean, I've probably spent like hundreds of dollars there, but anyways. Um, then we got um, Chicago 5, and it's funny because this the spine actually just says Chicago, like it's the first album or something. Um, even Chicago 2, which people mostly call just Chicago, I've got that and they call, you know, it says on the spine Chicago 2. Um, here's one I got for three bucks at Goodwill, Robert Gray, Strong Persuader. Um, I like, my favorite song is I Guess I Showed Her. I mean, that's a song I remember from my childhood. My parents actually got to go see uh, Robert Cray at Woodland Park Zoo years ago. Um, for, unfortunately, I didn't get to go. But yeah, here we go. We got Chicago 2. I accidentally cracked the case once. I stuffed the thing in my pocket after I bought it, you know, after I got home. Because I thought, because I was carrying a bunch of stuff in. So it's like, yeah, it would be more efficient. Of course, slipped right out. <laughs> yeah, cracked. Anyways, um, so it's amazing. You know, I always wondered why this album and Trains of Authority were never released, like, on cassette tape, and now I know why, because, um, you know, the original vinyls, they came on two vinyls, which was unheard of at the time, I didn't really think about that, but, um, yeah, so there's that, nah, that's a good album, but, did I show you guys yet, though, the spine, Chicago 2, not just Chicago, um, here is the best of weather report, we did the song Birdland in our, when I was in, um, jazz band, in my mid high school, and yes, there those do exist, at least in the U.S. Um, this is quite possibly my favorite, one of my most favorite Chicago albums. Um, this is Chicago Six, and again, this, this album just kicks so much butt. Then my mom got a. This isn't really mine; it's my mom's, but she got a Chicago Seven. I got this on vinyl, which apparently is rare. Silver Platters had a copy of it for like 30, 40 bucks. And then, and we're going to move on here to, like, the police a little bit, or Sting. Got Bring on the Night 1 and 2, which is pretty cool. I didn't know there was a, um, a little, what sucks is the back of this case is cracked down here. But anyways, I didn't know there was a VHS for this, but it was pretty cool. Someone uploaded it on YouTube. I don't think Sting is going to mind too much. Um, here's Toby Keith Unleashed. I don't really listen to country. I'm not a huge country guy, but, um, I went to see Toby Keith back, I think, in... 2007, I got the ticket somewhere around here. I don't know where it is, but um, before I show you this one, let me put the freaking CD back in its sleeve. And crap, the case is, I forgot when I bought this, the case was all screwed up, but um, just have to 
deal with it. But um, this is uh, She's Got Issues by The Offspring, a CD single. And uh, it's, I believe it's a European import because of the slim case, but also because the cover art is, um, the background is supposed to be green in the US version and it's red here. So um, now I got The Heart of Chicago 1 and 2, which is pretty cool. Um, this one though has a broken case up here, the lid is broken, so I gotta be careful. And that's how it was when I bought it. Of course though, I mean how can I resist Chicago, I'm a huge Chicago net. Um, also got, oh yeah, I forgot I have Weird Al Yankovic, the food album, but, um, you know, haven't really listened to that yet. I know there's good songs and everything, I just, you know, haven't taken the time to listen to that yet. Okay, so now we're going to move into my drawer. Um, because, yeah, rather than keeping clothes, you know, like shirts, socks, underwear in there, I keep CDs and video games, strategy guides in there, so let's take a look. Um... First start off with, uh, I guess, this one, Devil Put Dinosaurs Here by Alice in Chains, which of course is autographed, and inside is a pick for the album, Cherry Cantrell pick. Um, now I didn't get that with the CD, I got it at when we were recording at our studio. Um, anyways, because I wouldn't stop bothering, I mean, I, I feel bad about now, but I wouldn't stop bothering the producer to like, come on, you know, you got... Can I have the, you know, can I have an Allison Chains pick or something? Yeah, <laughs> I, I made him, you know, got him past his breaking point. He probably hates me now. But anyways, now then I got a Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Crazy Sits, which I also have on vinyl, which I'm surprised because I didn't know there was a vinyl release of this album, but there is. Although the songs on the vinyl release are shortened up, so that kind of sucks. But, you know, it's, that's the name of the game, guys. Um, here is Smash Mouth, um... Oh, what's it called again? Oh yeah, Fushio Mang, which is supposed to, apparently is supposed to be from The Godfather, you know, where he says like "fuck you, man" or something. But uh, anyways, that's pretty cool. I have the CD single for Walking on the Sun. I don't think it's in here right now, but I'll show that link in the next video or something. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's out in the hall. But of course, this is the, my two favorite songs on here: Walking on the Sun and Why Can't We Be Friends. I think it's a great version. You know, usually I don't like covers of people's music, even though I do like several Chicago covers and stuff. So I guess I'm kind of a, a hypocrite when it comes to that, but um, yeah, their their version of Why Can't We Be Friends is actually a really good version, I, I like it. Anyways, in my opinion of course, and then here's Smash Mouth, Smash Mouth, yeah, they call it, and is it one word? Because on the spine it's two words, but here, you know, I don't know why I question that. I don't I'll never find out the answer. Um, here's one. I gave this to my mom actually, but this is right out Chili Pepper's Greatest Hits. And uh, again, good album. I like to play some of those songs on guitar. And then right out Chili Peppers, we got uh, Blood, Sugar, Sex, Magic. Um, again, this is a classic. How can you go wrong? Uh, this one I only got for one song, but um, a training pool bodies. You know, that's a good song. Apparently they actually used that song to torture some terrorists they were interrogating or something. That's pretty funny. Cherry Papa Daddy's Zoot Suit Riot. Um, three bucks. I got it at Goodwill. Pretty good. You know, I like the song. Of course, that's the only song I listened to on that album. I should probably open up and listen to some other songs on there, but um, I don't know. I'm too lazy. And then here's the last um, Smash Mouth album I have, Astro Lounge. This is a great album, and I, I do want to import this from Japan sometime, but uh, man, this is such a great album. Um, Who's There is one of my favorites. Of course, All Star is like everyone's favorite. Then The Morning Comes, and of course, again, another cover of theirs that I like is Can't Get Enough of You, Baby. I love playing that on guitar. It's so freaking fun. That no, I never knew they were like Alice in Chains where their guitars are tuned down a half step, but I guess they are. Uh, then uh, here's a couple of them I'm going to show you. Here's Chicago Transit Authority that I got for six bucks. And because this is one of my most favorite albums of all time, I had to, yes, I did have to import it from Japan. Um, now, one reason I also import CDs is because there's bonus tracks in them or, you know, some kind of unreleased content. However, unfortunately, this album does not have it, but. Uh, I didn't know this till they set up Silver Platters, but they, you know, in, in different countries, they remaster the CDs, you know, 
And I heard, I, I don't think it's true, but I did hear that, like, the CDs are made out of stronger plastic. That's probably just a bunch of crap, but, I mean, yeah, a lot of these import CDs come with these little, like, overlays that come, you know, that go around the CD, and, you know, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and, uh, of course, on the back here, you got the track list in Japanese and everything. Um, and then it also comes with this little booklet, which is, uh, if I can get it out here which is a Japanese translation of all the, you know, all the stuff that you find in the manual and all the lyrics and stuff. It's pretty cool. They even have the English lyrics in here, which is pretty cool. They don't have that in the booklet itself, I don't think. Oh, just a bunch of CDs. Man. So, so freaking many. Um, of course, um, then I got a couple other Chicago Elms. I got Hot Streets, a Japanese import that I did, or that I got for 35 bucks. Yeah, $35. You know, funny thing is, Genji Ito, he can post a Famicom game, My Life, My Love, and I got to get in touch with him and stuff. He's a really great guy. But, um, he was saying that, uh, and actually, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I hope he didn't remove me, because, I mean, I don't think he did. Let me check on Facebook for a minute. <laughs> I just haven't seen any posts of his, which usually means... Okay, no, that's good, that's good. Um, I got a Facebook message, not from him. But anyways, he was telling me um, that, uh, you know, they actually, in Japan, they actually import CDs from the U.S. because it's cheaper. I didn't know that. Now, what I like about this is they actually made it as close to the vinyl version as possible. It's got the, you know, open it up like that, and then you take the CD out. And it has the same exact, you know, sleeve as the vinyl does. That's pretty cool. So it's kind of like having a mini LP. I mean, isn't that what CDs basically are? It's just LPs. I mean, but instead of a needle, it's a laser. You know, and... Jeez, okay. Um, anyways, I'll, I guess I'm going to turn my volume down. But um, anyways, okay. So now we're going to get to uh, um, some interesting territory here. We're gonna go through, we got a whole bunch of more CDs in here. I mean, we're not even done. I guess we're maybe halfway done, but we still got a crap ton of CDs to cover. Um, wow, there's so many. Like, like I'm not joking, it's like a lot of stuff in here. Anyways, okay, now. Oh, let's see if I get this stuff out. I guess now I'll take a, this is like the offspring stuff that I've got. So I showed you guys the she's got issues thing. You guys already know I got it. I'm not gonna, you know, no need to flaunt stuff. I mean, ah, oh, geez. Okay, okay. All right, I need to stop putting like, filling it to the brim. Anyways, okay. Here we got Smash. This is, um, you know, it's obviously a classic. So there's not much to say about it. Cause everyone said everything about it. Um, I think it was like it's 24th anniversary a couple days ago, actually. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I got some more Chicago stuff, jeez. Um, then we got, if I can get it out of here, we got Ignition. Again, like, I think this is like the second album The Offspring ever did, so it's definitely, so we're definitely reaching it to, in some old territory here. Um, Oh, here. Okay, and then we got, this is another one I want to import sometime, but this is the Offspring Americana. This album I got from Fred Meyer like a long time ago, and this was back when I didn't take care of my CDs, but fortunately this thing had like minimal damage to it. There were like some like coffee stains or something on it, and I was able to easily get those out, and CD plays just fine, so... This is the first album I ever, you know, where I learned all the songs on guitar from the, you know, the guitar tablature book. I mean, of course, you can see a lot of covers I did on there, if you guys want to see them. Anyways, then, this was the first Offspring album I actually got. I actually had, like, three different copies of this, because, you know, I bought two copies, because, you know, I couldn't take care of my CDs. This one, of course, I take care of, but, um, this is Ixnay on the Ombre. Of course, I got this because I loved Crazy Taxi, you know, uh, what is it, um... All I Want and Way Down the Line, those are great songs. And then Change the World, of course, that's the menu. They use the drum loop from the menu, for the menu music in Crazy Taxi. Anyways, but it's not just those songs that are good, it's the entire freaking album. This is a great album, same with Americana, I love it. And, 
Oh, and I believe they've uploaded the whole album on YouTube. Apparently the vinyl version has some, like, extra, like, dialogue. Can't remember the guy's name. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I like how the offspring always sneak, like, little Easter eggs and stuff in their music. It's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, down I have two copies of this one. Um, Splinter. This, I didn't know this when I got it, but this is a censored version. Um, which kind of sucks. So what I did was... Because I like the album so much, again, I almost own the entire album on guitar. I bought a, um, a Japanese import. Um, I don't know where the overlay is or anything, but uh, it's probably in the drawer somewhere. That's usually where I put them. But this one, of course, you don't doesn't have the Offspring logo on it. It also doesn't have the explicit content thing on here. But this is the uncensored version. Um, this one, though, here's the booklet, though. This one also comes with a... Uh, a DVD. Unfortunately, and this makes no sense to me, the DVD doesn't work, but the CD it works just fine. If anyone's wondering, yes, import CDs will work on, you know, American, well, you know, I believe CDs are reaching free, but DVDs, why are they reaching free? I mean, holy crap, what is wrong with these, you know, these companies? It's like, so what if I want to import something? Now, I mean, let's, I mean, AVGN already complained about it. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but okay, say for example, if I actually did come from Greece, because I am Greek, you know, let's say I came from Greece, I didn't really speak English that well, I wanted to import a CD from Greece where, you know, I could understand it better. Well, I can't, or, I mean, a movie, a movie, okay, a movie, I want to import from Greece. I can't do that because, well, it's not going to work on, I mean, you, I could import it, but I can't watch it. And I, I believe you can mod, like, DVD players to play, like, region-coded DVDs, but... I, you know, I really want to do that. I mean, I don't really see the point. Well, actually, you know what? I think I kind of do. Scratch what I said. I do see the point. I do see a huge point in that. Anyways, I'm trying to do this chronologically in order, but I'm, I'm not doing a very good job. Ah, uh, okay. So, put those back. Then this is a, a really bad a Japanese copy I got. Um, I imported this from China, but look at the back of the case. Jeez. Someone did not like this copy. It wasn't that expensive. Fortunately, the CD was in good condition. Um, again, I don't know where the overlay is. It, it should be in there somewhere, but um, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's got the extra songs on here. This one, yeah, this one actually does have it. Um, the, well, actually, the two Splinter CDs I have, too, also have extra songs on them, but uh, this one also does. And it's got Huck It, which is a song I transcribed entirely, all the parts. And... Uh, because I imported a book from Japan, I don't think I... Oh, oh yeah, I do have it here. Let me see if I can get it. <laughs> Hang on. It's down here. Just gotta grab it. I imported this book from Japan because I thought it would have a transcription of the song, but no, it doesn't. Which is bull crap. Anyways. Okay, so, moving on. Um, put this back. And I did own a, a U.S. copy of this because I couldn't wait for the... Japanese version to get in the mail. Got that at FYE, but then I just gave it to my dad because it's like, you know, I don't need it now. You can have it. Uh, uh, okay. Anyways, okay. This was this album was almost impossible to find the Offspring Greatest Hits. Now you're like, well, you already have all the album, all the songs in here. Why do you want a Greatest Hits album? Already that you just that big of an Offspring fan. Well. I guess it's that, but also there's two songs with here, Defy You and uh, Can't Repeat, and those songs weren't actually released before, so this is the only album that has it, so it's like, you know, I was looking high and low, and finally Silver Platters, so I had to get a copy of it in. Um, it's one of these, like, weird playlist releases. I don't know what the real difference is between a normal release and that, but uh, hopefully it's nothing horrible. Um... Oh yeah, I forgot I had this one. Um, this is Rise and Fall, Raging Grease. Still need to, you know, transcribe this on guitar. But uh, I haven't listened to the whole album yet. I mean, I'm sure it's good. I just haven't really listened to it yet. And I don't know where it went. I've got days. I got their latest album, Days Go By. I don't know where it is right now. Should be. I think it's in the hall, maybe. But anyways, now we're gonna move on to. The Police. Um, first of all, when I'm looking for the album, I'm not looking for the best. I'm looking for the very best of Staying in the Police. And apparently this is a re-release with more songs on it. That's pretty cool. And it was only five bucks. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think it was a good 
spending of money. Um, here's one I have two copies of, uh, Sting, Dream of the Blue Turtles. Again, one of the best albums ever made. Listen to it. Um, now, the other copy I have, it's in the hall, but it's, uh, it's actually from the Seattle Public Library because they sold it or they, you know, they got rid of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty much why I bought it. It's like, I probably wouldn't find another copy of that. So might as well, I found that at a Goodwill or something. So that's pretty cool. Um, then I got, uh, nothing like the sun. I don't know if it actually got released in a case like this, but it's like yellow spines, yellow and stuff. I don't know what's with that. So is the inside. I don't know what's with that. I got this for four bucks though. It's a great album. Again, favorite songs I'd say. Oh, I didn't say this about Dream of the Blue Turtles. So let's see. If you love somebody, something free loves the seventh wave. We work the black seam. I think my most favorite on that album is Fortress Run Your Heart. Here, I would say probably we'll be together. I don't know. There's also a um, cover of Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix, which is pretty cool. I haven't heard. You know, I grew up in Seattle, and I've never listened to Jimi Hendrix. I need to fix that. Like, that's a serious issue. Then here's Nada Como El Sol, uh, which is pretty much the Spanish version of Nothing Like the Sun, except there's only five songs on here. So, um, Mariposa Libre, I don't know which song that's supposed to be. Fragile, Portuguese. Si estamos juntos, elas danzan solas, that's, you know, the dance alone and fragilidad. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know too much about Salem. I haven't even ripped it on my computer yet. I don't think. But um, then I got uh, a, the single for all this time. It's weird that it, it opens like this, rather than you know like this. But pretty cool. I also have the tape single for this, which is you know of course awesome. And I got the I've got the soul cages here somewhere. But it's still wrapped. I mean, I bought it at FYE and I never opened it. I don't know where it is. Maybe I'll show that in the next video. Can't find it. I know it's in one of these drawers. I just don't know which one exactly. Then, another CD I got two copies of. Um, I got 10 Summoner's Tales. And then I got 10 Summoner's Tales. Um, one of them was the US copy I bought from Goodwill. I can't remember how much it was. I think like a dollar or two dollars or something. Then, I got the Japanese copy, which has an extra song on there, and, uh, this one had come with the overlay, but it did come with the Japanese lyric book, and which I'll show you guys. Um, the CD looks a lot better, too. I mean, you know, you got a picture staying with the sunglasses, and then here you got just red and black text. Nothing very interesting. Um, yeah, for my Japanese imports, I'll show you guys the lyric books, too, or the Japanese book glitz that come with it. If I can get it out here. It's a little hard to get in the case because the lurk book is in here, but it, it actually opens like this. It's like a huge, you know, kind of like a poster. So, yeah, free. There's some interesting stuff I didn't know in here, too, that, that it'll tell you. Like, uh, the second song in here, um, Love is Stronger Than Justice, is based on the Akira Kurosawa film, like The Magnificent Seven or something like that. I haven't seen that yet. So, it's pretty cool. Um, this, and of course, as you know, since I imported it from Japan, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Seriously, people, you need to listen to this before you die. Put this on your list of things to listen to before you die. It's a great album. Nothing About Me is probably one of my favorites. Seven Days is my most favorite, though. Um, then I have two copies of this, too. Um, I got If I Ever Lose My Faith in You. Here's the U.S. version, here, and then here's the... UK version, I believe, and uh, each of these, um, they have four songs on them, but the three songs are different. This one has Everybody Laugh But You, the extra track and import versions of Ten Summer's Tales. It's got January Stars, which is interesting because it's the same exact song as Everybody Laugh But You, but the lyrics are different and the vocal line's different. Then we worked the Black Seam, a 1993 remix, which I actually like better than the original one from Dream of the Blue Turtles, and I can't remember if the CDs are any different. Let me check. Um, yeah, this one's in color, which is pretty cool. And then the UK version I have is just, you know, geez, my allergies are really acting up. This one's just red and black. Like on the price tag, it says used 50 cents. Used 68? That's what it says. I don't know. Anyways, that's a good, that's a good one. I don't know. 
Then I got the imports, or I mean, not import, the single for uh, the Fields of Gold. And this one also has a live version of Bring on the Night. When the world is running down, you make the best of what's still around. And then Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. Again, I mean, if, in case you can't tell, Sting is a huge Hendrix fan. Um, then I got a couple other import, or, ah, import singles from the album. I got It's Probably Me. However, the one from Ten Summer's Tales isn't actually on here. This is from the movie. There's two versions. There's like a long version, and then there's like the movie from the, or the movie version. But yeah. Lethal Weapon 3 is pretty cool. And then this one's also from, uh, this one wasn't, this was done around the Ten Summoner's Tale era, or Ten Summoner's Tales era. This is, um, Demolition Man, King of Pain, Shape of My Heart, Love is Stronger Than Justice, It's Probably Me, and Day in the Life. I wonder if that's, like, he's talking about, like, the Beatles song. <laughs> I mean, I'm, someone might be like, well, duh, but it's like, well, I don't know, I haven't heard it yet. But, um, I like, you know, I like that. You see how Sting's face is in the background? And then, I don't know, I think Sting looks kind of creepy here. It's like he's going to eat your soul or something. You know, better put that away. Anyways, okay. And I've got, oh yeah, apparently this one also, this is a pretty rare one that I got for eight bucks. But this is called Five Live, just five live tracks. That Sting did on the Ten Summers Tale era. All this time, Roxanne, the Soul Cages, Walking on the Moon, Portraits Around Your Heart. It's pretty cool. Then, I got, um, this is an import I found. Um, Fields of Gold, The Best of Sting. I had the U.S. copy of this, I gave it to my mom. I was at Silver Platters one day, and I was just looking at the copies they had, and to my huge astonishment, I found an import. I, my computer says it's an Australian import, I don't know, but there's... Um, not only are there extra songs, but the track list is actually different. Like, there's some songs on there that, you know, on this one that aren't on the U.S. disc, and then there's some songs on the U.S. disc that aren't on the import version, so I don't know. Uh, how do you say this? Pulvdor, I guess? Published this? So, I don't know, but they have the track list on Wikipedia if you want to look it up. Then we got, um, When We Dance which is the, you know, the, the single. And that's all fine and good stuff, but what is with the back cover? I mean, it seems Sting, I mean, also on the back of Brand New Day, uh, you know, he always wants to show his feet. I mean, I guess he's got some kind of foot fetish or something. Um, and then I also have a single for uh, this cowboy song. I think it's out in the hall, though. I, mean, I know I keep saying about, like, every CD. Oh, I think it's out in the hall. I think it's out in the hall. Well, I'm sorry. I get, it just happens to be. Um look for other CDs, but I don't think it really had any. Okay. Um, wow, this, this video is going to go on for like 40 minutes. Um, anyways, then I got, well, again, this one I had two copies of. I gave the other one to my mom because I found an import. Um, Sting Mercury Falling. And the colors are different if you own the U.S. version. I don't know what country this one's from. I, I'm going to assume it's from, like, England or something because there's no, like, you know, lyrics or, like, translated lyrics that come with it. I also have some, uh, I thought I had a promo copy, but it's not really a promo copy, but, uh, yeah, this one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, cause it says, for promotion use only, no sale allowed, must be returned on demand of copyright owner. That, but the CD doesn't actually, you know, the, the back of the CD advertises 25 to midnight, the, you know, the extra song, but it's not actually in here. Um, and it also says on here, you know, play that song, but the disc doesn't have it, so I'm assuming someone, like, probably swapped out the disc or something, but it's still cool to have the case, and besides, the import version I have has the song on it, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, so put that back, and then I got a bunch of singles from Mercury Falling. I got, um, let's see, if I can get, well, and by a bunch, I mean three. I got I'm so happy I can't stop crying. There's a couple songs in here, Giacomo's Blues and Beneath the Desert Moon. Look these up on YouTube. These are two of the, like, two of my favorite Sting songs ever. I mean, they, they are really great. Um, then I got You Still Touch Me, which is, which has, which also has 25 to Midnight on it. I mean, if you want to get that. Then uh, Let Your Soul Be Your Pilot, one of my favorites from the album. And it's actually on the Sting shirt that I have for Mercury Falling. Instead of having, you know, the box art from the album. I thought that was kind of weird. Anyways, 
those back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we got. This is one I just happened to find. This is a Victoria's Secret album called Songs of Love. It's got Sacred Love, When We Dance, Mad About You, They Dance Alone, You Still Touch Me, Forks Around Your Heart, Ghost Story, and I Burn From You, or Burn For You. Um, so this is a pretty interesting album. It's a Victoria's Secret exclusive. Ooh. But, you know, me being the Sting fan that I am, I gotta get every freaking thing. Okay. Then I got... Uh, I got the single for Desert Rose. Not a huge fan of the song, but I just, you know, it's like too techno for me. I mean, I, I don't know. There's, and there's a huge, you know, crack in the case here, but not a huge deal, I guess. Then we got All This Time, which, not to be confused with the single I showed you guys earlier, this is like just a bunch of live performances. I also have uh, the DVD for it, which is pretty cool. I haven't watched it yet, but I've seen some of it on YouTube. Um, this one I was pretty lucky to find. This is um, If on a Winter's Night. I found this at a Goodwill for like two bucks, and the CD's like brand new. He did this album not that long ago. I mean, I think it was like only a few years ago or something. So that's pretty cool. What's the copyright year on here? 2009. Okay, well, it wasn't too far off. Still, technically it is a few years ago. Um, then I got Symphonicities. And uh, I regret I regret it because even though I don't like it, live albums, I saw it like a half price book sale, like a live version of this album, and I wanted to get it, and then I decided not to, and of course it wasn't there anymore, and it's like a thirty dollar album, and I could have got it for like five bucks, but um, it's a pretty good album, just you know, symphonic remixes of you know some of his best known song, best known songs, and even some obscure ones. There's "You Will Be My Ein True Love," I don't know that one, uh, so. And the Pirate's Bride, which, yeah, I don't really know that. It's on You Still Touch Me single, but I don't really know it that well. Then here's a single I have for that, you know, remember the very best of Sting the Police? This one is Roxanne Puff Daddy remix. Ooh, Roxanne 97. So, probably, I mean, knowing Puff Daddy, probably took him 97 takes to get it right, but I don't know, just a guess. I could be wrong. Here's another one I have two copies of. I'm trying to sell one of them. And it should be obvious which one. Um, if I get out of here, okay. So this is his latest album, The Last Ship. Um, I'm trying to sell this one because, you know, it's just a normal version. This one I have actually comes with two discs. The only thing I hate is that the lyric book is actually glued to the album. You can't take it out. But um, other than that, I mean, this one, you can take the lyric book out, you know, and read it because it's in the sleeve here. That's pretty cool. There's also a version of the album where, like, it's they recorded it at some play or something, which is pretty cool. Um, I hope this isn't Sting's last album. I'm looking forward to hearing more from him. It just sucks he doesn't want to do, like, rock and roll stuff anymore. But, you know, I still support him. I'm going to go see him in July, which is, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, what's the word? Like, I'm squeeing over it or, or something like that. Okay, so one more row of CDs, and then that will be it for now, anyways. Um, okay, so, get this out. I gotta be careful, I don't wanna like destroy the, I don't want the drawer falling out. Ow! Okay, finally got this out. And this here's Harry Chapin, Cats in the Cradle's a great song, it's the only reason I got it. Um, then here's an Eminem album I got, um, Encore. This, again, the, the CD door is broken, but um, it comes with a DVD, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, man, the case is, like, really broken, too. The top and the bottom parts are gone. CDs are in good condition, just not the, Can't say the same about the case. Um, here's a... I got this for $1, the, but the single for a life. My mom has this, and I, you know, she, she bought it for me when we were at the CD store, and I saw it for $1. It's like, never hurts to have a second copy. I actually have all the singles for, for Pearl Jam 10, which is just awesome. Um... Then we're gonna get into Bare Naked Ladies territory here a little bit. Here's Gordon. This one's kind of a rare version because it's got alternate or different artwork, and I think it's funnier. I mean, I like Ed's hair. I like all the ruckus going on in here. Um, it was pretty funny. I'm surprised they didn't get sued from Pepsi. I mean, that ball they use that extensively throughout the album and the music videos. It's like I'm surprised it wasn't you know didn't get copyright infringements. Um, here's a classic. 
the Beatles. I don't call it the White Album, I call it the Beatles because that's what the CD says. Um, and again, this is one I used to have, you know, another copy of, and then I, you know, didn't take care of my CDs. Now, of course, I have learned from my mistakes, so. <laughs> um, oh, this CD is kind of weird, what is that? Oh, this one, um, never heard of this band. No. Crew of Blues, this is actually my uncle's band, um, and I got it for free, so that's pretty cool. Um, he recorded this at a vast recording studios, which I understand was getting sold when we were, when our band was recording our CD, you know, our producer was like, oh my god, it's up for sale. So I was joking, it's like, we gotta, we've gotta raise money so we can buy the studio, you know, I need a place to rest. No. Um, here's a single for Lithium by Nirvana, I got it for three bucks, pretty cool stuff. Um, the main reason I like to get the singles is because there's unreleased stuff that I love to listen to, so, although I haven't heard anything on this album yet, besides, you know, Lithium. Um, here's kind of a rare version I have of Passion and Warfare by Steve Vai. Uh, again, I used to have another copy of this, and it's gone. My mom has a copy of this too, but this one is published, instead of like Sony or, or CBS, this is published by Relativity, which is pretty cool. Um, I got this one, you know, got this at Pike Place for six bucks. It's a pretty good deal. Um, oh, and I got another single too. I got Heart Shaped Box, Made in France. Oh, wee oui, wee, oui, we surrender. Um, it's okay, people. I'm part French. I can say that. Anyways, um, Bare Naked Ladies Are Me. This is a great album. I remember getting it from a uh, Silver Platter, or not Silver Platter. There's a place that used to be um, in Seattle or downtown Seattle called Easy Street Records, and I were going to the store. They had it right there in the front, and it's like, ah. Oh. Of course, did take care of that seat. I had so to get another one. Um, don't remember how much this one cost me. Um, this one I found at a thrift store. My dad has a copy of it too. Bare Naked Ladies Stun. Uh, again, another album I learned on guitar. It's pretty cool. Here is the Shoebox EP. The song Trust Me on here is pretty cool. If I Had a Million Dollars, the yellow tape version, which I believe is from BNL's first ever album they were selling at their stores when they first, or when they, or I mean that they were selling at their concerts when they first started off. The Shoebox album version, Shoebox Radio Remix. Um, I like the, I think the album art's pretty funny. Again, CD, bought a second copy of because I didn't take care of it. Um, you know, the first one, with that I got at Borders. When they, remember when Borders was still around? Anyways, um, so Aqualung. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to play the solo from Aqualung, but I did. I have, there's a video of it, if you guys want to see it. This one also has some extra tracks, so that's pretty cool. I also have the guitar book for this, that happened to find. It's not very common, either. Um, anyways, jeez, man, allergies. I want to rip my nose off, man. Um... Alice in Chains, Terror of Flies, always a classic. Again, one of my favorite albums of all time. Love playing the songs on guitar. Um, Alice in Chains, Alice in Chains. And uh, again, I used to have this album, although it didn't come in the cool colors like this. If anyone's wondering, yes, the album actually was released like this. And the CD also is pretty cool. It's a purple disc. Love it. It's just awesome. Then I got, again, the second copy, but uh, Nothing Safe. That's a great album. What the Hell Love I is probably my favorite song on there. Funny thing is, a few weeks ago, I was at Guitar Center, the guy was asking me, because I was playing House of Change, he's like, oh, can you play that? And you know, I did. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, next up is uh, the single for Gotta Get Away. I think this is like the only other Offspring single I've got. Um, then I got a classic. I think I have this on tape somewhere, but uh, Super Unknown by Soundgarden. This, man, this is a pretty heavy CD case, and it's not even an import. Um, here is Smells Like Teen Spirit. Um, of course, you get a rare photo, and I mean an extremely rare photo of Kurt Cobain actually smiling. But come on, being a Seattleite, I gotta buy these Seattle bands, you know. Um, anyways. And then this one, again, second copy, Pinch Me, which I didn't know was from another country, but I think it's from Australia, but Born Human is a great song here. There's also Inlane Bowline where, yeah, it's a rare instance where Jim Cregan gets to sing lead vocals. It's pretty cool. Um, oh, here's another, is this another single I got? Or, oh, no, 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 no
actually this is the third copy I bought, it's the one copy I bought, or second copy I bought, I accidentally broke the CD. This one, of course, it hasn't broke yet. Um, five bucks, Pike Place, it was pretty cool. Um, now we're gonna step into a little bit of Beatles territory. I got, you know, this is funny, this is a, oh, apparently it's an original issue of Revolver by the Beatles. I went to every CD store and I just could not find it, so I'm like, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to get it on eBay. And of course, after I get this, then I start seeing Revolver every at like every CD store. You, you ever have that habit to you where like, you, you try finding, looking for something and you know, it never shows up? So you go, you know, you just buy it online, then after you buy it online, you start seeing it everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I don't know why that, things work that way, but... Um, again, second copy, Abbey Road, always classic. I don't know how much I paid for it. I mean, look, there's no price. That's kind of weird. Looks like I, I got it at FYE. I think I did. Um, here is Change the World. My mom had the tape for this single. Um, great. Of course, this is one of the best songs ever written. I mean, I love it. First air clapping song I ever knew about. Um, here is, I don't listen to a whole lot of their music, but, uh, Bad Religion, Stranger Than Fiction. It's got the song Inner Logic on there, which I understand was from uh, Crazy Taxi, you know, during the credit scroll. Here's an import I had, or that I have, Bare Naked Ladies Maroon. Um, again, Japanese import, the overlay is somewhere around here. Um, also, the disc is actually a different color. It's supposed to be like this white and red that you see in the background, but it's actually like Sakudai colored or cherry blossoms. Um, I also had a, here's the Japanese lyric book for it, pretty cool. Um, I actually had a promo disc for this and then I broke it by accident one day, which really upset me because, I mean, and I, I had like several copies of that album too because I bought like ones that came with the extra song on it. The promo disc had the extra song on it, but you know, didn't take care of my CDs, which is, of course, I regret it now. I mean, if you don't think I do, I do. Anyway, um, again, one of the best albums ever, obvious because, you know, I got the import version. Um, go listen to it. it. You will not regret it. Um, sell, Sell, Sell is my favorite song on there. Um, here's another Bad Religion album, The Grey Race, which, again, I used to have, and then I lost it. But um, apparently the cover art is different for each copy. I remember the first copy I got at FYE came with a sleeve. This one has Them and Us and 10 and 2010, which of course are both songs from Crazy Taxi. Um, now here's a couple that I got, a couple more Beatles ones I got. If I can get them out. Um, got Past Masters Volume 1 and 2. My sister I think has this one. But um, got these at like, I think got one at Goodwill and the other one at like Golden Oldies or something. Um, which is a record store in Washington. And, and I mean, it's like, it's a record store. Like, it's an old, old place. Sprays are still there. Um, here's another import for Pearl Jam. Tan I got for Jeremy. And I like these stickers. Not to be confused with the more expensive, identical import version. Pretty funny. And speaking of which, here is my import copy of Pearl Jam 10. Um, got this at half price. It's got a Wash and Dirty Frank on them. I haven't really heard those, but, um. Oh, it's got a live version of Alive, which I think is on the single version. It's a European import, though, if you guys can tell from that sticker on the front. Here's Born on a Pirate Ship, and again, second copy of it I own. Oh. Then here's a Japanese CD I, I got at Silver Platters. This is uh, Jaywalk. I'm not too familiar with them, but they did, uh, their guitarist, Tomohisa Mitsuyasu, did the music for a few NES games. He did um, Fist of the North Star. Um, he did a, what is it, he did Common No Ninja, which I, which I did a video of a long time ago. Um, geez, what else? He did, uh, that Puss in Boots game. Yeah, you might be like, man, those, those songs have crappy music. I, I don't know if I want to get their own. This, their stuff's pretty good, actually. I like it. And that about wraps it up. Yeah, I know, it took us 40, 45 freaking minutes to do it do this, but we did it. Did I show you guys that one? Uh, there's one more CD. One more. Um, this good friend of mine actually gave it to me. Uh, there's, there's a few other CDs in here, but I just want to show you guys one. Um, let me get the stuff out of here. This is 
um, Genji Ito Golden Best 40th Anniversary Edition. He did the music for only one game. Um, well, actually did a few. He did a Galaxy Odyssey for the disc system, which I have. But he also did a My Life, My Love, which is a Famicom game, which I've got. Um, but he actually was nice enough to send me the CD for free, and he actually... He autographed it, but I just can't remember where. Uh, maybe, maybe it was... I think it was in a letter that he sent me with the package, but, uh... This is awesome. It's a great album, and he's a very talented guy, too. I mean, listen. I mean, he's got some stuff on YouTube, I think, if you want to listen to him. Again, what a great guy. Um, he told, I remember he told me he was like, he thought himself as like the Japanese Elvis Costello. It's pretty funny. Okay, anyways, that's the CDs for now. I'll let you guys get back to whichever you guys wanted to do today. And I'll see you guys later. Jeez, but allergies man hope i'm not getting sick again because i just got over a bad cold i don't want to go through that again anyways i'll see you guys later god bless peace out part two is on the way sometime